This presentation is brought to you by the W.P. Carey School of Business Online Learning Group at Arizona State University. I'm Steve Salick, Director of Online Learning for the W.P. Carey School of Business, and in this episode of Countdown to Learn, I'll be taking you on a quick visual tour of Blackboard 9, now called Blackboard Learn. This presentation is only meant to be a quick overview, and I'll be taking you through Blackboard Learn and introducing you to the new look and feel, the notifications dashboard, the changes in the control panel, how you administer and manage your course, the blog and journal tools, the improved group management tools, and the removal of the digital Dropbox from Blackboard Learn. In the coming weeks, we'll be producing additional episodes that address each tool in detail. So let's get started. After logging into Blackboard Learn, you'll notice the general layout and configuration remain the same. The navigation tabs are still prominently featured in the upper left-hand corner of the interface. One immediate difference you may notice is that the look has been updated. It's cleaner and neater and is designed to mirror MyASU and provide a more seamless experience between MyASU and Blackboard. One of the new tools featured in Blackboard Learn is the Notifications Dashboard. You can access the Notifications Dashboard by clicking on the sub-tab on the Blackboard homepage. The Notifications Dashboard provides a collection of modules which give you updates, changes, to-do lists, alerts, generally anything that's changing or required in a course. It scans across all courses and it's displayed to both students and faculty. We'll spend more time on the Notifications Dashboard in a future episode, but for now I just want to quickly show the What's New module. The What's New module scans across all courses that a student's enrolled in and brings forward information from anything that's changed since the class was last viewed in Blackboard. For example, if I were to click on Announcements, it would show me the announcements that have been posted in each course I'm enrolled in since I last looked at Blackboard. Clicking on the Announcement title will take you directly to that announcement in the course. After you've entered your course, one of the most immediate changes you'll notice is a separate area labeled Course Management under the main course menu. Within that area, you'll find the Course Control Panel. The Course Control Panel replaces the separate page that you've used for the past several years to manage aspects of your course. The control panel provides a smaller profile and lets you expand and contract different categories to have access to all the tool sets needed to control your course. Blackboard has re-engineered the interface and reduced the number of clicks necessary to edit and manage certain components of your course. Almost all of the entries on the course control panel can now be used in conjunction with the edit mode on the upper right hand corner of the interface to edit content right on the page. To edit an announcement, for example, I would click on Announcements and then turn the edit mode on. This gives me access to edit and manage the announcements in my course. The function is similar for all other tools in Blackboard. Blackboards included new tools and learn to help you drive collaboration and communication in your class. You'll now find a blogging tool and a journal tool. The blogging tool can be configured in a variety of ways and used at either the course level or as a group tool. You can configure who can post and who can comment, and Blackboard allows you to see who's participating by keeping a running tally of who's contributed to the blog. The journal tool works in a similar way to the blog, but it's oriented towards one-to-one -one communication between the faculty member and the student. You might use this tool to ask students to create personal reflections about case studies or certain course readings. The final improvement I'd like to demonstrate in this presentation is group management. Prior to Blackboard Learn, group management was a tedious process. Each group had to be manually created, and then you had to individually add each group member to that group. The process has been considerably simplified in Blackboard Learn. Let's say I wanted to create 10 groups for student collaboration in my course. To do that, I would click on Users and Groups, Groups. I would select Create Group Set because I want to create multiple groups. Then I have the choice of how the students would enroll in each group. They can enroll themselves, I can enroll them as the instructor with manual enroll, or I can just randomize enrollment. I'm going to want to enroll the students in each group, so I'm going to choose manual enroll. You would name your groups. 
You can give a description if you like. And then you choose what tasks are available for the students to do in the groups. I don't need them to keep journals. I don't need them to perform to a task list. And I don't need them to use Scholar, so I'll uncheck those. Now I want 10 groups, so I'll enter the number 10 in the number of groups. Click on Submit. And the system creates 10 groups for me. In this section, Group Set Enrollments, you can see a list of names. This list will be populated with all the students in your course, and you can use control click multiple clicking to select which student you want in which group. I'm going to add Michael to group one. And similarly, you would go down through the rest of your 10 groups and add the students. This is a much more simplified process than previous versions of Blackboard, and it should enable you to create groups and manage them much more effectively. The final improvement to Blackboard Learn is something I can't demonstrate because it's a tool that's been removed, the Digital Dropbox. In the past, the Digital Dropbox was used by many faculty members to allow students to hand in assignments. The Digital Dropbox had several problems. If students didn't follow a strict naming convention, you could often not be able to tell whose file was whose. You could have to download files one at a time, and there were several other problems. Blackboard removed the Digital Dropbox at the request of the greater user community. Instead, you'll be using the Assignments feature, which has been in Blackboard for some time. The added benefit to the Assignments feature is when you create an assignment, it automatically integrates it into the Grade Center. You can also download all of the assignments at one time in a single zip file, and when you do, Blackboard will automatically label each assignment with the student's name. We'll spend some time in the coming weeks teaching you how to effectively use the Assignments tool. I hope this brief overview of Blackboard Learn has been informative. I know many of you will have questions and concerns about learning to use the new tools in Blackboard Learn, and over the next several weeks, the online learning group will be producing a variety of videos and face-to-face -face training to bring you up to speed on what's new and how to use it. Thanks for taking the time for viewing this presentation. Please keep an eye out for emails from the online learning group providing links to new videos about different topics and tools within Blackboard Learn.